without further ado, here's what we're going to go over today. We're going to um, do a little overview of career paths. I, again, I don't have as much time as I'd like, but at least I wanted to inter introduce you to the different things that are out there. Um, whoops. Uh, audio industry, the expectations in this field are a little bit different. Um, you folks that are in the industry already know that, but um, people that haven't entered it may not know certain things. Um, what the traits are of successful uh, professionals, because that can help you figure out how you yourself can become successful. Um, what you should do to prepare for an internship or your first job, or maybe um, your third or fourth job, I don't know, got all different people here. Um, what professionalism actually looks like, because uh, not everybody knows that, <laughs> and where you might look for opportunities. So that's what we're going to cover uh, today. Um, so I'm going to kick it off first with career paths. And I'm going to do this in a different order. Um, in the module, I kind of went with the most common ones first, but I'm actually going to switch it up and go with the ones where there's kind of um, a lot of growth and also places where people might not be thinking about careers in those areas. So the first one is AV or audiovisual. It's exploding right now. So um, I, if, if somebody was approaching me on where can I get a job, I would be like AV. Um, a lot of people call me for that. Um, and so that means anything from working for a corporation, uh, like Google, for instance, has a, we have, we've placed a couple people there. Um, they have a huge AV team and all they do is go all over the world and build these amazing, you know, uh, venues and audio visual experiences. Um, so this is a booming industry. It combines audio video, but it also combines, um, uh, networking so computer networking so that's a big part of information systems being tied to av um, so that would be one that i would definitely point point out as something you may not be thinking about and there's a ton of work in it um, and the other one uh, that i think people think about in a particular way but game audio just so you know games sell more than films so if you're gravitating towards film audio for film you might want to include or think about also game audio. Um, what I would do if I was just starting out is I would pick up some programming skills because that would make you kind of unstoppable. Um, and what I mean by programming is there's a lot of software programming and middleware that's used in designing audio for games. I would learn that. So things like Unity and FMOD, um, getting some coursework in those would help you break into game audio. Even if you were more focused on sound design, you might want to pick up some of those programming skills because there's a lot of demand for that. And I don't think people will consider that. Um, broadcast audio is also, there's a lot of work, um, you know, sports, any types of live events, radio, television, um, there's a lot of career paths in that. I would say, um, just kind of a side note, I would definitely focus on radio frequency RF specialists are in huge demand. Um, even if you're doing like union work, that's in huge demand. So picking up some certifications in RF coordination is a must. I know SURE is doing that right now, is free RF coordination certification. I would be hopping on that right now in addition to any schooling you're doing because that's a big uh, skill. And I'm kind of looking at these questions. You got that? Okay. Yep, you're right. And yes, they are looking for wise experience. So any, that's a middleware piece. Um, somebody was asking about a particular middleware piece wise um, for game audio. So there's a, there's a bunch of them, FMOD, Unity, they're all, there's four or five different ones and those are the only three I can remember. Um, so yes, definitely get some experience in that. Um, so broadcast audio is a place to work. Uh, where do you find the free RF course? Sure, the microphone company, sure.com is the RF course. And I don't have the link. I think the link's in the module though. So a lot of the things I'm referencing are especially like CTS, Certified Technology Specialist certification. That's in the module, the links to that, Infosys. A lot of the certifications are in the module. So I'm just not gonna go through those all at once since it's all in one place there. Um, acoustics. This is something folks don't consider possibly because it probably would require a graduate degree. So in addition to an audio degree, you would also pursue an acoustics degree. Um, 
what's great about this though is you can work both on the architectural side um, designing you know spaces for studios um, venues concert halls but also on the transducer side where you're um, designing speakers and the kind of containers for consumer electronics for automobiles for mobile devices all of that requires acoustic specialists um, noise vibration specialists would be like designing um, surroundings of the airport um, and then audiologist is a little bit of an outlier but that's something that you can pursue with acoustics and uh, audio software hardware production these are the folks that are designing the software and the hardware that are used in audio production. So DAW, you know, digital audio workstations, plugins, um, the hardware that you use. Um, but also, again, this comes up in consumer electronics. So you're seeing a lot of software uh, program, DSP programmers working for Apple, um, you know, working for Motorola, working for folks that are doing uh, mobile devices, um, Samsung. And then um, kind of the stepping stone into those two careers would be a QA or a test uh, engineer hardware and software are probably going to require some either like a dual major like audio and electrical engineering or audio and computer science or you are adding on an advanced degree um, especially DSP uh, programming um, I will tell you that there are so many requests for DSP software engineers so that's a, there's a huge growth in that so if you can if you have any curiosity in computer science and programming you should do that right now because i could probably get you a job right now um, it's just it's a it's a skill that's so needed in so many areas so if you can combine audio and computer science or electronics um, both of those things I, I have a degree in electrical engineering and that has served me so well because um, there were no audio programs when I started out. So um, electrical engineering was just kind of the perfect thing for, uh, for me. I've used it so much. So again, if you have any curiosity or the ability to pursue these things, just you should go for it because I promise you it will be a great investment. And sound for film and video, tons of opportunities there as well. Um, all right, this is the kind of you probably like this is the thing where you could start right now uh, there's probably a whole bunch of student filmmakers get in there and be a boom op on a student film that's like a perfect way to just start getting yourself in the mix um uh, the bulk of these jobs require a lot of editing skills so becoming really fast editor in pro tools for instance um would probably be a good start because speed is everything in a lot of these so you can sound effects are edited dialogues edited the music editor all of those folks are really like editing focused so um, being able to manipulate uh, tracks in a DAW really quickly are, is going to be really important so there's that and live sound of course I think is what everybody thinks of when we think about audio probably they're like oh I want to work in live sound so that's still that's plenty of opportunity there um, in all of these positions I would say the ones that you're, are the greatest in demand would be anything that has the most technical skill, right? So any of the system tech positions, um, it, those are gonna be in great demand. So pick up a lot of, again, a lot of technical skills and that's gonna help you get to where you wanna get in the live sound area. And then of course there's audio production, which I think everybody thinks of, oh, I wanna work in a recording studio. I'm gonna tell you that's where there's the teeniest, tiniest amount of jobs right now. Um, so you, in production, you have to think outside the box. You're gonna have to think about podcast production or audiobooks. Um, Women's Audio Mission, we operate two studios and we have so many podcasts and audiobooks coming in way more than we do music. And that's what kind of keeps our business rolling. Um, so you have to just think about it. You might be a recording engineer, but you might be working at Audible, which, you know, working on audible, audiobooks um, instead of in a big studio working in music. Um, so I think um, thinking a little bit outside of the box on that is going to be important. But um, of course, there are still crews in all of those areas, um, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to pause there and see just if there was any questions that I missed. I didn't want to. Great. 
you guys have great comments. I love reading these comments. I love reading the comments so much that I forget that I'm supposed to be teaching something. Uh, can you, can I go back to live sound slide? Yes, I can. Look at that. I have the technology. Any jobs where you can work from home with audio? Um, possibly, but it's, uh, if you had the, the gear for it, but generally working from home isn't the MO, um, but there are people doing like podcast editing, even podcast recording at home. So there are things you can do remotely, but I think when you're starting out, that's probably not going to be an option. Um, right away. What about careers in music streaming services? Um, so I think you're talking like Spotify or Pandora, definitely careers there, but they fall mostly in production. So again, you'd be doing audio, it would be an audio production career at Spotify. Um, so some of the things that happen at Spotify right now is uh, there's a lot of podcast production. They have in-house um, studios and podcast production happening for, uh, because they purchased Gimlet. Uh, could you expand on computer science and audio? What languages or courses should we be looking for? Um, I don't think you should be looking for a particular course. I think you should probably start out, like if you're out of school, go over to the computer science um, department and just, and tell them what you're trying to do. And, you know, you would start with their intro course. There's not particular languages that I would necessarily focus on. It's more that you are, um, you know, you could, that you could go to an audio employer and say, yeah, I, I've already taken a year of computer science. These are the language I, languages I know. Um, I would approach it from that and not, not like learning a language because it's actually, it's more of a skill in problem solving and then it's easy to apply it to all the different, different languages. Uh, would a lot of students be looking for someone who wants to do more studio tech stuff? Yes, they would. Fixing gear, consoles, yes, they do. So that's where electronics has been very useful for me because I can fix and build and do things like that. Do you know of any electronic courses which can aid audio hard? I would, again, I would, it's not just a course. So if um, you're going to do audio hardware production, they're talk, it would be like an entire um, course of study, like a, either a minor in electronics or a double major. Like I know University of Miami has a double major in audio engineering and electrical engineering, which I think is a great combination. I wish more schools would, would do that. But I would, again, I would go to your school and just say, I can't, I don't want to do a whole major, but could I, you know, enroll in the intro, like first year of this and see what you can come up with. I know when I taught at City College, that's what I, I would have them do a whole year of electronics. Um, should I say, um, okay, I, I can't get too deep into super specific questions on software, so I apologize. Um, okay. Um, asking if they need a degree in electrical engineering. Some of them just do. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a full degree, but you might be able to get in the door with at least partially some electrical engineering courses, but I, I'm just going to tell you electrical engineering degree is gold. Like people still try to hire me and I'm like, I'm old. I haven't done that in a hundred years. And they're like, we'll give you the, I, you know, it's like name your price. It's, it's like a, it's a gold mine. <laughs> so, um, and you know, it's nice cause you can fix and build and do stuff. So I do think it's a, a cool thing if you can figure out how to do that. What sound for film video should you be, should you go in wanting to be something like sound or should you take, take what you can get and hope to move up? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later anyway. Um, okay. I'm going to move on before we get too deep into this stuff, but I'll try to maybe uh, circle back on, on some of these. Uh, we are going to be, now we're going to talk about um, kind of, understanding the audio industry because it, it's a it's kind of an odd uh its own beast uh the different career paths and the different genres each kind of have a different culture so i'm just kind of pulling out what's common um, between them all for the most part just so that you're aware again folks that have been in this industry five plus years you you probably want to go get a coffee right now because you already know but um i'm going to go there anyway uh so because this is a super competitive place, 
again, like I'm going to keep saying this, get all of that extra certification outside of school, because at this point, it's kind of like a, an audio degree is almost too general and it's not enough. So you're going to have to start adding these things on. It doesn't mean you have to do them all at once, but let's say you go to a place and you notice that you're doing an internship and you notice that everybody has you know, Dante certification, which is a networking audio networking protocol, then that's your, your clue, like go do it. It's free, why not? Um, RF coordination, if you're doing live sound, is kind of a no brainer. Um, CTS is for AV folks, Pro Tools certification, anything that, you know, can give you a le leg up is kind of what's needed right now. Um, so I think that's the mistake I'm seeing from young people is they just kind of come in thinking that, okay, I got, I have my degree. Now I just get a job and it's just, no, you're going to have to really buckle down and figure out, you know, what's going to set you apart from everybody else. Um, and I would say the things that set people apart generally um, aren't necessarily just your training and the certifications. Those are just very simple, tangible things you can take care of, but the actual thing that employers are looking for are kind of the things that make somebody, um, I don't know, just a generic, a general good person, right? So no matter what role you're in, whether it's just taking, maybe you're um, an intern that day and you're just taking the food order, that you are the indispensable <laughs> food order person. Like everybody is like, oh my God, we're not going to live if this person is gone. That's how I got all my jobs is I just started to do stuff that they didn't ask me to do and then they couldn't live without it and then that they kind of have to hire you. So just kind of think of it like what could I do here in this role that would make me indispensable and they, they can't do without me. That's the first thing that I would look at. Um, this, the thing about the audio industry too is it's very fickle. Um, and so it's fast paced. And when somebody kind of has an opportunity, they're expecting an answer right then. So this, when I say yes person, I don't mean like let people step all over you. I mean, when you pick up the phone and someone says, hey, I've got this opportunity, do you wanna do it? That you don't like hem and haw and go, um, I'm not sure. You just go, yeah, I'm in, what are we doing? Because that's the person that everybody wants to call, right? Because they know, like, they'll do it. I can get this person to do it. They're on it. And that's that person always gets all these jobs. If you get the, when I get a person, if they start saying, well, maybe I'll call you back. I go, nope, I'm moving on. I go on to the next person. And that, this is true of the audio industry. They're just like, they want an instant yes. Um, so if you're not that person, maybe learn how to become that person. It's also kind of a lesson in being positive, right? Like, when you pick up the phone, you're like, great, this is a, this is a you know, great opportunity. It's going to be an adventure. I'm doing it. So I would just be very much like, yes, 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 and jump on it instead of like sitting around forever waiting for the perfect thing to happen because it generally doesn't work like that. Everything that I, in my career, I got from my past job, like somebody on that job said, you should do this, and then I'd try it out. And sometimes I tried things out, and I didn't like it, and then I learned, well, I don't like that. I won't do it again. So Let's look at it as a learning experience. Um, and then last, I'm setting the expectation here. I see this come up a lot. Uh, this is an industry that's very long hours and tough schedules, not a lot of breaks. There's um, knowing that going in and accepting it going in is going to make you a happier person than if you go in thinking this is going to be a cush job and I'll get my break every hour and all this stuff then you're going to be unhappy. So just expecting up front that typically it's very, the schedules are very tough. Now it might work out that you get a gig that's not, um, but a lot of them are, my life was, uh, I, you know, I had to make a lot of sacrifices when I was younger, such as never planning a vacation or <laughs> missing a lot of birthdays and things like that because freelance is hard, you know, it's, um, again, you can't say no to things because they, they typically don't call you back. So uh, I, if you know that going in, then you'd be like, okay, I'm going to put in a good solid however many years of this, knowing that it gets better later. But that's, that's, the, that's kind of the landscape or culture all the way around in this industry. I'm um, seeing a ton of questions here. 
I, I do think it's possible, yes, somebody asked if they need a bachelor's degree. It is possible to do this without going to university, but I do, it's, I think it's cheaper, honestly, to go to, you know, a community college or a university than it is to kind of a specialized school, or you could just come and take your classes at Women's Audio Mission. That's another option, but we do like to add that on to some college training. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, there's definitely a ton of people that have unrelated college degrees in audio. I think a degree in general is super useful. So don't be like, oh, no, I took the wrong degree because you can totally add on to that. So, um, yeah, I don't necessarily think it has to be an audio degree. But if you find that, uh, you know, folks are asking you to have that, then then you, you will need to have that. Um, I will tell you that. Uh, we have a really solid internship program at Women's Audio Mission. That's another way to gain skills. Um, but I, I noticed that, like, uh, you know, we have a recording studio, and I think the expectation is people are like, oh, great, I'm going to come and work in the recording studio. And then we give them that first test of setting up a single microphone, and nobody passes it. So there's that's an instance where it's like they're not ready. You're not ready to be in the studio. So you have to get those skills so that you are ready. Right. So that's that's part of um, I don't want to say you have to, but, um, you know, I don't also want to give you the wrong uh, advice and unrealistic expectations there. Whoever just talked about physics, physics degrees are the bomb. Yes. Get a physics degree. Yes. Math degrees. Yes. All for 100 percent. I have a math minor. Love it. Use it all the time. Um, those will serve you well, but then you don't have to kind of focus it into electronics. Anyway, here we are. Okay, I don't know what questions I've answered. Bella and Christina will take care of me. Um, okay, so. Hey, hey Terry, I'm going to jump in just really quickly. Yeah. Um, there was one question that um, that was in the chat, which is, do you have recommendations for working with men in the industry? From my experience, it is not a very safe space, or that there is not a lot expecting the woman to have the answers. How do you deal with that? Yes, that is very, very true. And that's why Women's Audio Mission is that exists. Um, it, it, it is, I'm trying to give you the things to kind of work around that. So, you, you know, we can't magically change men all at once, right? Um, so the way that I've dealt with it is I, um, the way that I, first of all, you have to look at how can I gain respect? So the way that I've gained respect is I am highly overtrained. Like I am just, I have so much confidence. Like if somebody could, comes at me with, like I, this happens to me with men all the time, or they'll say, oh yeah, I, you know, it's, let me show you how to do this electronics thing. And I'll be like, do you really want to go there with me? And they'll be like, oh wait, yeah, that's right. You have a degree in electrical engineering. I'm like, yeah, don't. <laughs> don't even bring it up because I will embarrass you in public. Um, so I think any technical experience that you can get to be, they, they start to stand down because they'll start to see, whoa, 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 they know a lot more than I do. Now, you're always going to get the idiot that won't stand down and, you know, that they're annoying to men too, to be honest. There's men that'll be like, oh my God, I can't be around that person. Um, but I, I just try to be kind of a ninja and try to, instead of inflaming the situation, getting around it and also just finding the good people that value my expertise and you know, luckily there's a ton of my whole career. I worked with men. That's all that was out there. And uh, I was lucky that I found, you know, really good mentors and, and folks that mentored me. So if you find the bad ones and it's unsafe, get the hell out. Time to change. Time to move on to another place. I've done that too. I've been like never going to work there again, ever. Like walked out, never went back. So, um, Unfortunately, that is true, and we're trying to change that, but um, hopefully that kind of answered it. Uh, <laughs> yes, don't, because I will embarrass you in public. That's a good catchphrase for everything. Um, is, are there any others before I move on? Do you remember, you I think you covered most of the other ones, and we'll keep an eye on the chat. Okay, thank you, Christina. Um, so what I wanted to look at, I, I've over the years accumulated kind of a list from all of the um, highly successful women in this industry and men, but um, I've kind of pulled them, did a straw poll on what they think was uh, their their superpower, like what, what makes them 
amazing. And the one that come, came up the most, surprisingly, was focus. Um, that's, they can stay highly focused for really long periods of time. And I've noticed that that's true for me. Um, and everybody I talk to says that. So focus is, I think, this key element that you're able to focus really um, surgically on a task and get it done even when there's just a ton of distractions. So think about all these environments, recording studios, live sound, post-production for a film, um, any of those things, engineering, building, designing something, you have to just be able to focus in order to solve the problem with like a huge numbers of people and distractions around you. And, and in the case of engineering, like a just a, a really a problem that nobody knows how to fix. So that focus part is really important. And I think some people kind of naturally have it and others don't, but there is a way to cultivate it. It's not like you can't get it. So um, you might want to think about how can you get focused? Meditation obviously is the thing they always kind of, um, you know, suggest to train your mind. Um, there's other ways to do it, but um, that focus thing, if you're super uh, flustered and a little ADD, you're going to have to figure out a way to get a handle on that because all of these tasks, these uh, career paths are very much requiring focus. Um, the second thing here is something that I've, I've talked about a lot with folks too, where um, somebody that's really good makes their job look really easy, right? So they, they are able to just take something that's really complicated and make it look extremely easy and simple. And there's like a wonderful flow to it. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna kind of illustrate what I see a lot and what is the wrong way to go about this is some people when they're starting out like to show their clients or the artist or whoever they're working with just how hard their job is like oh my god I've got to do these 40 edits oh my god I've got to carry this thing oh my god I've got to change the microphone and they're grunting and sighing and all of this stuff and the end result of that a it's unprofessional b no one wants to be around you because you're just a downer and nobody wants to know how hard your job is, right? Everybody thinks their job is hard. So this part about making your job look easy is super important. Um, just remember that next time you're complaining. And I'm a big whiner, so uh, I had to kind of curb that myself. Um, and then this last one is just, again, like I said, being a really good person. Um, and being a good person is that you're going to do the right thing or you're going to go the extra mile or do the extra work when nobody's watching you and probably nobody will ever find out about it. And there's so few people that do that. So when I find somebody that does that, I'm like, I want to hire that person because they just do the right thing no matter what. Um, and it's rare, to be honest. Everybody wants to, you to know that they did this thing. And uh, it's kind of a, 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 like, I don't, I do this, I do a lot of stuff that nobody knows about to make it right. And I don't think it's because I'm a good person, actually. I think I'm just OCD. So if you're OCD, that works too. Um, but I just can't leave it broken. You know, like that's my thing. It's like, I can't leave that broken. I got to fix it. Or, you know, like they're going to, I don't want them to have noticed that edit. I just, I have to do it. I need to do it now. Um, I don't know. It's just a, a thing. So if you have that, that's a good thing. If you don't have it, you might want to figure out how you can start just do the right thing all the time wouldn't the world be a wonderful place if we all did that um okay i don't see any other questions popping up there um reliable okay. yeah i'm gonna jump in with one um that was from a little bit farther back um what yep. do you recommend doing a break into more film and post-production work as a young professional and tips for making yourself more marketable if you're interested in working in podcasting um, so for film, I would just start, I would honestly, I would start working on student films. I would, I would do every single thing I could on a student film. Um, and then I would start applying to any of the post, bigger post-production places, which again, you're looking at LA, New York, and some in San Francisco. So, um, but the first thing out of the gate is uh, I would start working with filmmakers. Right, make yourself indispensable, word gets around. And I'm gonna talk about that a little later. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about, so I think the podcast one will naturally 
get answered later. Um, so exceptionally reliable, self-sufficient. What I mean by this is that you are able to solve problems and do things without asking a million questions of other people because that's what I see right now is we hand a task out and it just gets flipped right back to me with questions and it's like, no, <laughs> go solve it, right? Just handle it. That's my motto, like just learn to handle it. Uh, I'm seeing a decline in people able to just handle it, but when you're a professional, there's nobody to hand it off to, so you have to kind of figure things out for yourself. Um, thick skin. Uh, this is a really ego driven, right? Every single one of these careers is, is service, right? So um, there's a lot of egos that we're supporting and we have to be able to weather their, the storm of their emotional output and that's gonna require a thick skin. And you know what? You have to be able to, to not have the last word. I never have the last word. I just sit there and go, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, your client and artist are going to be the ones with the last word, even if they're wrong. That's just part of the business. And you're going to have to learn how to kind of weather that. And that goes from, you know, film to live sound to podcast to studio work. That's the truth is you're supporting somebody else. So that can be hard. Um, this invisible in the production process, um, it sounds kind of like anti-feminist, but it totally is not because I never want you to be invisible like, I want you to be at the table when people are handing jobs out and you know talking about opportunities. But when you're in production, that's the, the place that you have to be invisible because the artist or the client or the product, the film, the podcast, that's the star, right? That's the thing that's supposed to be in the spotlight, not you, right? You're not in the spotlight. You're not taking up a lot of space. Uh, you're supporting you're the one that's making this look like a rock star, but you're not the rock star. So you just kind of, the more invisible you are, the the better you're doing your job. And that doesn't, and I don't know, I have to find a better word because invisible is kind of sounds wrong. We're just blending into the environment <laughs> instead of like taking up a lot of space. Um, and again, this is a theme, constantly adding skills. So wherever you can add skills, and I'm telling you this because some of the most highly successful people I find to be, the ones that are learning all the time. Like you'd think they'd be done and it's like, they're just learning all the time. So it's fascinating to me that they continue to add skills and do things. Um, and I think that's part of what makes them really successful. Um, okay, you guys are having a whole conversation in this chat without me and I feel left out, but okay. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, okay. So this, this uh, networking thing um, is my biggest regret in my life, I think, of my whole career is I'm a, I'm a huge introvert and I hate networking. And I figured out pretty late that this could have brought a lot of, made things a lot easier for me <laughs> in my life if I had taken it more seriously when I was younger. So I know this now as an old person for a fact. Even if you're an introvert, you got to get your ass out there and you can learn to do it without hurting yourself. So um, everything, because I kind of looked hindsight, every single thing um, that I got in my career was from networking. It wasn't from applying online or applying for a job the traditional way. It was all from networking. Like somebody recommended me, somebody called me up. You know, if somebody had met somewhere, I mean, I, I, I meet people at all these conferences and the, we get the darndest opportunities come out of it, things that you would never think of. So I'm going to say most of your job opportunities are going to come out of networking. And I know that's a bummer for all you introverts, but it's the truth. So it is super important. I'll talk a little bit more um, about how to do that. But there's a name for this, you know, they, I don't know what they call it now, social science, what you know, studying people, um, but it, it's called proximity principle, meaning like if you want to be in, a, in an industry or, or in a certain situation, you have to put yourself in proximity to the situation or those people. So it just makes sense that networking would be going to conferences, you know, going to the meetings of those conferences, volunteering at events, things like that put you in proximity to all of those people. 
right? And I, that's how I met people, like working on this thing or volunteering at this thing or, you know, and then it's like, oh, hey, I meet them and next month later they're calling me asking if I would be interested in doing something. So the other thing that I, I can give you as, as an example is that when I see somebody, a student, for instance, that shows up to everything all the time, it's just human nature that you're going to help that person. So like if I see them show up all the time, it's like, oh, I want to help them. And I'm subconsciously thinking that it's not even a conscious decision. So I think um, anytime you show up at, at these things, people will start to watch out for you. And, you know, WAM does conferences, Audio Engineering Society does conferences. I've listed a bevy of conferences in the module, Infosys, Avixa, every industry has some professional society that you should join and start attending and going to their meetings and conferences. And that's the best way to get yourself in proximity of these people. So that's, that's the, that's my spiel on networking. And I hope you all do it because I learned the hard way that I should have done it a lot longer. Okay. Um, how are we doing on the questions? Uh, good. Another basic resources, somebody else. We have sound channel for basic resources on our website. LinkedIn is a totally useful tool that I'm about to talk about right now. Uh, WAMCon New York. Yes, we should be in New York if fingers crossed we can get through this pandemic. Okay, I think we're caught up. Um, for those of you that are already in the industry, this you've probably probably already done, but I think folks, students starting out don't realize one of the biggest complaints from potential employers is that students aren't good communicators. <laughs> so just passing it on, not I'm not judging you. Um, but that's they, they're saying that the communication situation isn't set up correctly yet. So before you go and apply for an internship, or your first job, you want to make sure that your modes of communication are ready. And when I say ready, that you're able to answer within 24 hours, because this happens at WAM all the time. Somebody calls me up and they're like, hey, I need somebody tomorrow for this thing. Really cool opportunity. So I'm just like on the phone and I need somebody to have a resume, right, available in 24 hours. So I need to, first, you need to answer me with the email or the call. And then second, that's the second slide will be that your resume is ready, right? So you need to be able to, you know, answer everything within 24 hours. What I see is I don't think everybody understands the timeline. Um, but when you start working professionally, the timeline is less than 24 hours. It's not three days. It's not a week. Because by then, if you email me a week later, the job is gone. For sure, it's gone. I will have found somebody else. So getting used to answering everything really and it doesn't mean you're checking your phone all day but it just means like i have certain times in the day where i just check like at lunchtime i go okay what what have i missed Ooh, shoot i need to get back to that person end of the day i just make sure that i wrap everything up by the end of the day so that i can say to myself i got back to everybody in 24 hours that's kind of like responsive so you you need to have channels of communication that are that responsive and that's what I mean. And I covered all the things like answer your phone professionally. Don't have a weird email address. Oh, my God. <laughs> so many weird email addresses, right? A potential employer, just, just have your name, please. Name at Gmail or whatever you choose. But just your name, not anything cute or bizarre, because you just don't know how they're going to take that. My all-time favorite I've been saying this one I've been saying for decades. My all time favorite email for an intern application was syringe666 at yahoo.com. Obviously, it wasn't a successful. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, okay. Resume LinkedIn. Get that LinkedIn profile up there for free. Get all, it's basically your online resume. Get it up there for sure. Have a LinkedIn profile. Get your resume if you can get. I my favorite things that I've seen are students that put up um, free uh, like a website with their portfolio and their resume on it. I think that's brilliant. Think about it. You're marketing yourself. These are all marketing tools. LinkedIn, a website shows that you know how to do kind of website stuff too. Like that's a skill, right? So all of those things are great. 
um, get that stuff happening now because then if I call or email and say, hey, I've got this great opportunity, you just send me the link and I can just pass it on really quickly and make something happen. So um, definitely you want to have those things all ready and going. Um, what have I missed, Christina or Bella? Looking good, uh, Terry. I just want to, I'm answering it in the chat, but I'll answer it for everybody out there. There are some uh, questions about uh, WAM online resources and classes. And uh, the, the short answer is our in-person classes are temporarily on hold um, because we're all in uh, shelter in place as many of you are around the country and around the world. Um, but these WAM Everywhere uh, offerings um, kind of fall into three categories. One, these live sessions, which we're doing right now. Two, sound channel classes, which are on demand and you can take any time. Uh, right now, both are offered for free. So we highly recommend that you go to that. And then we will also be doing some classes uh, for our, our youth classes online um, rolling out in a few weeks. Um, so very much um, appreciate everyone's interest in those and we'll share the links in the chat so everyone can check them out. Um, so people are asking about what to put on their resume. I answer that in the free module that's on Sound Channel. So you can go check that out, what's important to put on your resume. Um, portfolio for film games, same thing. I would put um, some video clips with anything that you did for sound design. And I would put my resume on online portfolio. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to answer for that right now. Um, so let's talk about what exactly it means to be a professional because this is assuming let's say you landed that first internship and this might be the case you might be in your first entry-level job and you might be wondering why aren't I proceeding as quickly as I thought um, I just kind of want to make sure especially the students understand what it what it means to call yourself a professional um, because a lot of people think once they graduate they are then a professional and that's really honestly not the case because when you call yourself a professional it actually means like you have to you're you're becoming that expert in the room so you, you have to have the technical chops right and that doesn't just mean training it means experience it means like you've applied that to an experience confidently and you know you can get from point a to b by yourself because like i said before in our internship program we're seeing they have the training but then we put them in the studio and they're not able to get to point a from point A to B on their own. They need help. So that's not professional yet, right? That means you still need experience in order to be able to be that person. Second, the technical chops are meaningless if you don't have people skills. So if people literally don't like working with you, it doesn't matter how smart or how technical you are. And so this was big for me because I was raised by wolves basically. So my people skills and my people skills still aren't great. I really have to work on that because A, I'm an introvert, B, had no, no person to look to in my family for that. So people skills is totally important. You have to be able to like really understand what people want and they have to like to work with you. And then the third, even if, with those two things, you need to have leadership skills, which means they trust you. That's what it means to lead. Like they have to trust that you're going to get them from point A to point B. So those are, those are, kind of three big things that people aren't always thinking about. Um, so when you're in an internship, start to think about that. Like, how can I, you know, it doesn't mean like you're a ass kisser, because I'm definitely not. But it just means like when you sit down and you start to work with somebody that you can easily work through a problem without like starting a fight or being obnoxious or being arrogant, right? Like that you can get through this problem. So these are, this is really what it means to be a professional. So. Um, the sooner you can start thinking about that, um, like I really, I was lucky. I had somebody pull me inside and say, hey, you know what, you're, you're awesome, but you're just like a little too, I don't know, my people skills weren't great. So I just was kind of blunt because I was trying to, in my mind, um, I thought I was getting the client through the process faster, but I was just too blunt. And so I had to learn you know, this, that wasn't, and then when I understood it, I was like, oh, you're right. And it totally changed my whole perception. So just take in that feedback from people. It's, it's always helpful, even if it's hard and painful. It was painful. No, it wasn't. It was fine. Um, okay. So here's the other one. <laughs> this is the one. I, and I'm kind of giving you uh, all of the things that we notice in our interns that can go wrong. So 
punctuality. I, it sounds like such a little thing, but in literally in our industry, because it's the support basically of the entire entertainment industry, everything is, it has to be on time. It's just like the timeline for everything is so compressed. So on time in our industry is late. That's a common saying, like on time is late. And what people mean by that is when you show up, you need to be ready to literally hit record or whatever you're doing, like put the PA on, whatever it is, like it's, it's, you're ready, you're ready to go. So the worst thing to do would be to be on time and then ask to go get coffee. That's like my, I hate that. That's like a big, that's giant fail, right? Take care of yourself, have that stuff done ahead of time, right? Um, also, it's just, uh, it's taking care of your client or your artist or your, any, the people that you're working with that you're not showing up at the last minute all frazzled, right? Like skidding in like, ah, and not ready to go. You should be like calm, caffeinated, ready to go when everybody shows up. That's, you're providing a great environment and service for your people when you do that. So it's, that's what the importance of getting there early and being prepared is all about. It's not just like whatevs, I didn't make it. It's respect, right? You're res you got to respect your boss, your client, your, the people you work with, right? So it's disrespectful to not be on time. And I'm seeing tons of this and I'm just like, it's crazy. Time is money in our industry. So when you're late, you just wasted not only somebody's time, but their money. So that should be obvious. People that are working already know that. Um, here's some of the etiquette things that are a little bit unique to the audio industry. Um, fast pace so you want to really try to anticipate needs it's not a passive industry you're not sitting around waiting for somebody to tell you what to do you're out, you're out there just like handling stuff as it comes out uh, and happens so you want to get yourself kind of looking around like what can i do if you're sitting around on any any of these jobs in any curves if you're just sitting there not doing something some you're not something's not being done right because i have never in my entire career, just been sitting around. You know, it's like maybe sometimes I'm waiting for a client, maybe, but most of the time it's like I'm doing edits or I'm doing something. There's something that I should be doing. So anticipate needs. I'm gonna say this for the millionth time, focus on your artist and client, not on you, because it is it's just not about you at this point in time. It's about getting getting their project or getting them onto the stage or whatever. That's the focus. Um, Know when to communicate and when to be silent, huge one. Um, most of the time, you're probably silent. When you're starting out, I would err on the side of silence. I, I've had two different people that I place fired for talking too much, no joke. <clears throat> Granted, they were in um, post-production and recording studio environments, and that's, I think, unnaturally silent and quiet, so it's hard for people, it's uncomfortable, but you have to be used to that silence and you have to be used to kind of not engaging people in conversation. Um, the client's not there to have a conversation, they're there to work and lots of times they're just being nice by having conversation with you, but don't extend it. Just like if they say, hi, my name's you know Jane and I'm here to do this thing and oh, oh you're so-and-so great, nice to meet you and just leave it at that. You know, don't extend it um, because they're, they're just wanting to get through their thing. So just think about like, what are we doing for this person to make them comfortable and get their job done? Last thing is the most deadliest of all. Do not talk about your band podcast or personal projects. Ah, the most hated thing for an artist or client. They hate, 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 hate it. Don't do it. Just don't do it, not the time or place. Again, focus on your artist or client. So that's my advice on that. Um, I see this happen all the time and it's really bad form. Hey Terry, um, I just yeah. wanna jump in real quick to um, promote my own personal band if that's okay with you. <laughs> just kidding. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are coming up on noon, so I want to let everybody know that um, we're going to extend a little bit longer if you're able to see really important links. Um, one is for feedback, so you can let us know how you like the session and what you want to see next. Uh, please take two minutes to fill that out. It really, really helps us out. 
Second is the link for online training. There's a lot of questions in the chat about um, trainings that WAM offers um, online. So there you can find both uh, links to these recorded sessions and upcoming classes, as well as our on-demand sound channel training modules. So please do check that out. And then finally, if we don't get to your questions today, we have office hours every single Friday. Um, so recommend that you check out our upcoming office hours class if you have some questions, or if you just want to network with each other. They're more um, informal forum sessions um, at every day, uh, excuse me, every Friday at 11 a.m. California time. So check those out at that last link, wham.rocks slash wham everywhere. And uh, you can also see our upcoming classes there. Um, we had one question, Terry, that uh, got lost in the mix, okay. uh, which was um, tips on um, getting jobs for Foley. And um, also, uh, your, um, speaking of etiquette, your preferences um, for being contacted for jobs over Instagram versus LinkedIn. Oh, I love those questions. These are good questions. Um, <clears throat> Foley is one of the difficult ones to get into because it's specialized um so your best bet is to get into you know start interning at a place that has a foley stage and um hope that you can work your way over there it's probably not the place that you're going to start out I, I i haven't seen it work that way but um again it's that proximity thing get yourself around film people and the more people you tell that i want to get into foley the more people they're going to want to, they're going to help you. They're going to be like, hey, oh my God, this thing opened up. You should go over there. That's how things happen to me. I would just tell people what I wanted to do. And, um, you, you know, someone wouldn't think about me for it. They'd be like, oh, this came open. You should do it. Um, so that's great. As far as the Instagram, social media, uh, I actually, um, I don't think most employers like to get that because they just get inundated. Like I get inundated so i really don't like getting any of that stuff wham doesn't like getting it like if because if think of it we have you know we're interacting with three thousand plus people every year if everybody sent us a, a post on hire me we would just be we couldn't wouldn't be able to handle it so we kind of have to do it like out to many and hope for the best because we just we can't uh do it and i think that's probably true for most people's um social media i could be wrong on that that's just how it works for wham so i i don't, i'm not sure that's the I'm, I'm not sure that's the best way um you know you want to see if it was like a position to open up and you're responding to that maybe but um i don't think that's the best way to do it okay um we're almost at the end here but i wanted to get through this i get this question all the time so a, a lot of things i'm putting in here are questions that i get all the time so sorry if some of it is boring to you but that's what I'm trying to get all in one place. Um, so the, this how to dress thing obviously varies for each of the industries, but it's kind of similar in some ways if you think about it. Um, the best thing you need to do is to blend in. Again, right, we're not trying to be the center of attention. So I would say a fail would be if everybody notices what you're wearing, that might not be a good outfit for the day. I noticed that. Like I was like, oh, I should, that's not, people keep saying I like that. That's I don't want them to notice my clothes, you know, that's just not my thing. Um, so again, one, another one of those horrible things, you don't wear a shirt with a band name, brand or slogan on it, right? Because the odds of pissing somebody off could be good. Like, let's say you're doing, um, you know, a rap session and you're wearing a country music shirt or something. It just might, you know, they might be like, oh my God, can this person handle it? You know, do you just, why bother? Why have that distraction? So I wouldn't do it. Flip-flop sandals, I cannot tell you how many people have showed up on a session with flip-flops and sandals. Ah, uh, we hate it. First of all, it's dangerous stuff, you know, on your foot, ouch. Um, maybe later in your career, I'm not saying it'll never happen, but it's just not the first thing that you're gonna show up in. Just don't, don't do it. Jewelry is another thing, especially if you're in any of the production, live production things that gets caught on stuff, you can hurt yourself. I learned it because I had this happen twice. And I wasn't even wearing the jewelry, but I had somebody assisting that had a bracelet on and it kept uh, shining light into the glass in the studio. And the artist just got pissed off, was like, that's really bugging the shit out of me. I'm getting this light onto the glass here and it's really distracting. And I was like, oh my God, I never would have thought of that. So, but I like somebody, I had another, uh, a guy that had a watch, same thing, and he took it off right away and just was like, oh my God, I'm never wearing that again. 
Um, you know, so just think about things you don't want to be distracting. And, you know, because it doesn't mean your whole life is dictated by this. It just means when you're on a job, right? My life, I don't, I, I hate that I have to, if I have to go raise money, I have to put a suit on. Do I like to wear suits? No, I hate wearing suits. But, you know, that's just part of my thing and it gets us money and then I don't wear the suit when I'm at home. That's fine. So um, I would say blend in. There's a big, like, theater has a really great uh, kind of protocol, like dress blacks, right? Like they all dress in black so that they, actors, are the only things that are noticed, right? You blend in. So I think you have to think about what are your, you know, dress blacks for the for your industry, whatever you're in. And maybe yours doesn't have one, um, but even recording sessions for studios, we definitely, there's, there's definitely things you don't want to do. Um, and again, you don't want to like draw attention. And I think um, we are on the caregiving, like I said this before, so I'm just going to touch on this, but food, water, caffeine, you may not have breaks, have it on you um, so that you can take care of yourself and take full advantage of your client's breaks because it might be the only one you're going to get for the day. It happens to me on a lot. Um, I'm a huge proponent of toolkits, whatever it is for your industry. So if you're an editor, it could be a trackball mouse, um, your iLock, and a USB drive. If you're an AV installer, it might look like this. Um, I'm doing a video series on what's in my toolbox. I don't know when that's happening, but I think they'll put it in the, the chat. I started with it, but I'm a huge proponent of tools. Um, it's made me a hero on many different occasions when something was just a session ground to a halt and uh, having a particular tool kind of just saved the day. And especially for women, going back to that thing of like how to get respect, I cannot tell you how many times that is where I gained respect, like I fixed the console. <laughs> it's like, right? Nothing speaks respect than you can't do the session without me because I had to fix that for you. So toolkits, I love it. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a couple of things, but it's just kind of exudes seriousness um, if you have one. So I'm, I'm hugely into that. Um, and like I said, upgrade your skills, get those certifications, manufacturer training. I said before, like go any console. If you're a live person, start getting console training. Again, they're all listed in that module, but like get yourself on all the different types. Get on a Midas, get on a Digico. Um, get on those consoles and then you can say I have training in these four consoles. Uh, trade publications, I probably read mm, seven or eight different trade publications. Again, I list those on the module. I, a lot of them are free. Get yourself signed up and uh, you can learn a lot just by reading those. And the conferences are huge. WAMCON, all of them. AES, all of them attend those conferences those are super not only are you getting training but you're networking all at the same time um and then this is my last slide of where to look um but if you like i said before i do think most of your placements are going to come from networking but i'm not saying don't apply on your job on the job boards but i'm just saying i i think a lot of them aren't happening that way but manufacturer websites are huge um, a thing that happens a lot for WAM is manufacturers come to us with a job that's on their website and then we put it out there and tell them that we have women applying and then that, that can kind of work. I will tell you what's coming up. Um, we're doing, oh, Christina, I don't know if we set these dates yet or Elena set these up. Um, we're doing two career days um, with manufacturers who are going to talk about what they're looking for with people. Um, so we've got, uh, I think, three or four manufacturers each day. They're going to get on for a half hour and talk about either um, they probably, a lot of people aren't hiring right now because of COVID, but um, what they're going to be looking for. So I think that's going to be, that would, that's something that like, if you hear about that and you're looking for work, you should jump on those because the minute you can make a connection to a manufacturer, that's that's gold. You want to work that. So those will be coming up virtually. I don't know if they're in May or in April. I can't remember. Anyway, they're <laughs> they're on the website. Um, 
And like I said, look on WAM has a job board. All of the um, trade um, societies have job boards. So you should, like I said, join those, go to their conferences, and they have a job board. So that you're just kind of working all of those things all at once. And then they're LinkedIn. There's definitely a lot of jobs that are posted on LinkedIn. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I think I want to, oh, May 13th and May 20th are the career days, I think. Yeah, and I can't remember, I don't even know the time. They're happening, yeah. trust me, they're happening. Um, so questions and that, that's all I have to say to you all, unless there's questions. Terry, we have one question, um, a specific question. Do you hear about jobs for voice interfaces, uh, audio user experience or audio research or for UI or software? Um, I do occasionally, yes, I do. Um, mostly though it's around QA and test more than anything is what they're looking for. I'm not sure for voice interfaces. I'm not sure. Are you talking about, uh, I'm not sure what that means about jobs for voice interfaces. That came from Kata. I don't know if you want to put a uh, voice assistance was the clarification. Oh, voice assistance. Like I no, I have not had one from a company that creates like online. Uh, what do you call it? Help desk kind of thing. I have not heard about that. Um, do you want to avoid jewelry that makes noise too? Yes, I would say avoid all as much jewelry as possible while you're working. Just a thing that's come up. Um, okay. Cynthia has a question. Um, been out of the industry for a few years. Any questions, any suggestions on how to build up my chops again and how to get uh, back into the industry? I was doing live sound for several years before. Well, that's great. So you already have live sound experience. I would, A, maybe go back to, unless you got out of it because you didn't like it there, but um, I would probably do some of the manufacturer training to just get, make sure that you're up to speed on any new console situations for live sound. Um, so like I said, Digico and Avid and Midas, make sure you've got all of the latest going on for that and uh, our, again, get RF certification. It's all free right now at Shure. I would do that right now. Um, and then when you are approaching those folks, you can be like, hey, I already have all this experience and I've updated all my skills. Boom, done. We've got one, uh, two questions that are pretty pertinent. Um, how would you say uh, you can brand yourself or look for a job with everything going around with the COVID pandemic? I'm a student about to graduate next month knowing that jobs everywhere are not as open as they usually are. And sort of a related question, what can one be doing while in self isolation right now to prepare themselves? All right, easy one is while you're in isolation, I'm going to keep saying this over and over, all these certifications are online and they're free. So I would be barreling through as many like CTS, Infosys, Dante, all of that stuff, RF, I would be getting that. Why not? You're just waiting anyway. So that's, it's online and it's available now. So that's something you can do outside of your school. I am so sorry for anyone who's going to graduate next month. Or that's, 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 this is just a horrible turn of events for that. So, but here's the silver lining. Um, people are still hiring. Um, I know that we just heard from a couple of companies that are going to participate in the career panel. Um, some of them are not, but some of them are hiring in this. So it's not like everything's completely shut down. So I would proceed full st steam ahead. Um, and I would say, again, like maybe the way to, I would brand myself is say, well, because I wasn't, you know, at school, I did all of these extra things. And it just shows initiative. Like I did all these certifications on my own um, without my school. Like this is showing initiative and having these extra skills and that you're ready and just say, I'm ready. You know, so I think that's, I, I, I think you should just proceed full st steam ahead because people are still, Ironically, they're still hiring. So I think you're going to be fine. 